So I want to tell you about um, an intervention that um, actually is has some funding, uh, hopefully going to be um, it's attached to the health reform bill, so we'll see how it does, um, for home visiting programs because this is a program that has been shown to make a difference in a lot of the things we've been talking about. The Nurse Family Partnership was started by Dr. David Olds. Um, he's now at the University of Colorado. And the intervention takes specially trained registered nurses, RNs, and the intervention has been looking at, has, has worked with low-income pregnant um, women. Often these are very young and unmarried and only first-time parents because whether a mom did it well or not, if she's a second, third, fourth, or whatever time mom, um, she's already been there, done that, read the book, saw the film, and she's not as open, so to speak, to, um, to a different way as she is um, when it's the first time and she's completely overwhelmed and has no idea what's happening to her body or how this will work for her. So they match these nurses with these young first-time moms, um, preferably by about 16 weeks of pregnancy. That same nurse then works with that same young mom every one, one to two weeks um, through the child's second birthday, so it's about two and a half years. And the goals of the intervention are to improve pregnancy outcomes. We've now seen how critically important that is. To improve the child's health and development. Again, we've been talking about how critical that is. And the parents have to have um, a goal um, for the future. Traumatized folks often have a hard time seeing the future. Um, all they can see is the here and now. Um, so they actually have to have a goal of um, either to get in school or stay in school or get a job, get some training, something so that down the road they'd be able to care for themselves and their children. So there have been three randomized controlled trials looking at this uh, intervention, and they go back, as you can see, to the late 70s. And um, pretty impressive for this kind of a complex long-term intervention, pretty impressive numbers of, of uh, participants in these three randomized controlled trials. Um, and what those three randomized controlled trials have shown us is that, indeed, this intervention does improve prenatal health, Children are less likely to be injured. And these next two are very important indicators of child well-being everywhere in the world. That mom has fewer pregnancies and there's an increased intervals between those pregnancies. It's important for mom to be able to replenish her nutritional supplies. It's important for um, economics so that there's enough money to, to pay for what these children need on and on and on around the world. Those two things there are um, huge indicators of child well-being or lack thereof. Moms are more likely to be employed, and the kids are more ready for school. The moms, even though they're not the target, so to speak, of the intervention, 15 years later, they themselves are doing better in, in lots of key respects here. Another paper from this study showed that they are better able to handle stress than um, folks who are in the control group. Even 15 years later, they're still able to manage their life challenges better. The kids are half as likely to be abused and neglected. That's huge, a huge decrease in and a very critical risk factor for later lots of things, including diabetes and heart disease. And they also are more likely to be avoiding contact with the juvenile justice system. And again, this goes out 15 years. They're more likely to be staying in school, um, lots of things. And when they go to school, um, and remember this intervention ends at age two, um, but three, four years later, they go to school with higher IQs. Their language development is better, and they have fewer mental health problems um, because of this intervention. And these two studies here, uh, one from JAMA from a few uh, months ago, um, talk about how this is a very rigorously evaluated intervention that does all the right things. So, and this is an article from um, some folks at University of Colorado um, talking about who did a this, this, this article is actually um, looking at the disparities in child health in, in our American Indian and Alaska Native communities. And after talking about all of the hard things that our children are dealing with in their health and mental health, they looked at um, interventions that have been used, including their family partnership, and they concluded the article by saying, we are placing bets on the value of early intervention, beginning prenatally with the mother's first pregnancy, extending throughout the first years of life and beyond, it's one of the surest ways to begin to address past centuries of neglect and improve the prospects of American Indian and Alaska Native children in this century. And this last slide here is um, just some of the many things that we can do as we understand this larger picture of what's happening 
her risk for all these areas, whether it's diabetes, heart disease, domestic violence, substance abuse, depression, on and on. So um, the categories across down the left side are nutrition, depression and substance abuse, and parenting, because, and it's in quotations because, of course, many people can be parents to children uh, besides biological parents. Um, and so this is just a list of many things um, that I came up with. Um, I hope around Indian country we will come up with a much more comprehensive list, ones that make sense locally. Um, but we should be screening for depression in family planning, in prenatal clinics, in well child clinics, in WIC clinics. We should be making sure that our pregnant women um, and even women before conception have the very best nutrition possible. We should be supplementing uh, fruits and vegetables into the WIC program. Um, here at Cherokee, we've been doing a backpack food program. So many children do not have enough food. They get uh, subsidized meals during the school day, but on weekends and school holidays, they go home to often little or no food. And so on Fridays, these kids get an unmarked backpack full of uh, non-perishable foods to help get them through the weekend and the school holidays, anything to get nutrition and re into these children and reduce their stress at the same time. So there's a lot of things on there, and again, we can um, all come up with other sorts of things that we can do now that we understand that this, what happens when we are very young matters, and it matters for a very long time. So anything we can do to make a difference there um, is going to be have, have payoff for years and years to come. Prenatal interventions, for example, we've thought that if we help a pregnant woman, um, hopefully we help her, hopefully we help her unborn child. But now that we're understanding epigenetics, we, the person we probably help the most is the unborn child's child. And this is, as we're understanding these things, is changing everything about um, how we understand and, um, what's going on in our communities, both individually and collectively, and the types of interventions that we need to be incorporating um, into our programs. And truly, as we understand these roots, um, that they are so common to um, all these different problems as we've been talking about. If we prevent anything, we just may prevent everything. So I appreciate you guys um, hanging in there.